here she is, the completed blanket. It's the extra large miter granny square blanket. It was created with community help. I really didn't know what was going to happen when I started making the first extra large miter granny square. I made one, then I made another. And then I thought, oh, I'll make two more because I was trying to use up some yarn. And then I thought, well, I won't stop there. I'll turn them into a simple little square throw. And then I thought, gee, I've got enough yarn here. I could probably elongate it if I added some straight shell stitch off the top and the bottom. And then I thought, well, now I, I can't stop now. I have to put the border on. So we tried the zigzag stitch to join them. We added a really simple border. We kept it simple. We used the kiss method, the keep it simple, sweetheart, or in this case, <laughs> Keep it strictly shell stitch. Keep it shell stitch. The whole thing is pretty much the shell stitch with just the zigzag join to put the four of those squares together. And we're gonna include a little recap of how to do the zigzag join in this video. So you can sort of see that if it was um, not clear enough in the actual live stream we did. And of course, the piece de resistance, we finished it with a little heart at the very center. That was everybody who watched that live stream voted and the heart was what we used up the remainder of that gray yarn to make. And I love that. I love how it just kind of pulls the whole thing together. It's the heart at the very center of this project. This was such a fun little make. And uh, that's how it turned out. It's really quite large. Um, it's almost five feet tall. It's a, just a little bit under that. So about 50, 50 to 52 inches tall and it wound up being um, close to almost 40 inches across. I mean, that's almost my entire arm um, span. And of course this isn't blocked yet and it will get a little bit larger with use. And I intend to use it on the couch because um, we still have some cool nights ahead of us. But overall, I'm delighted with the way this turned out. Thank you so much to everybody who helped us build it. And now I'm going to take you over to the craft table and I'm going to show you a quick recap of how to do the zigzag join stitch that we used to put together these fun little mitered granny squares. I'm just going to give you guys a quick recap of how to do the zigzag join stitch. We have a full uh, live stream in which we did it. So you can see all four of those squares going together, but I'm just going to recap some of the finer points today. So I've got four little squares to demonstrate on. I've got a hook, a yarn needle, a pair of scissors, a little extra yarn, and also uh, something I'm going to describe the whole concept of the join with. You can use the zigzag stitch to join any number of squares, and I just wanted to demonstrate with a quick grid. So here I've got a 4x5 grid. Now it can be 3x4, 20x30, doesn't matter how many squares you've got, but this join does work best on squares, rectangles, or straight strips of fabric. And the reason being is because you want to actually join entire seams at once. So as opposed to just joining in between the individual squares and then the individual squares and then doing an entire row together, you can do the entire seam from top to bottom or from side to side. But you want to do all of the seams that go in one direction to start with, like all of the top bottom ones, and then all of the side to side ones to finish. So like I said, it doesn't matter how many squares you've got, but you can do them all, you want to do the full seam with the zigzag stitch as opposed to doing individual seams between squares and then joining whole rows afterwards. I went ahead and I laid out my squares in the arrangement that I want them joined in. Now obviously if I had a whole lot more I'd have my full rows all laid out in the way that I want to see them, but I'm just demonstrating on four. I'm going to first seam from the bottom all the way up to the top through those four squares and then I'm going to seam from the side all the way to the other side. So let's zoom in and see what that looks like. I find it helpful to work flat on a surface so that you can keep track of where your stitches are going and your uh, squares don't sort of spin around on you. So I'm starting with a slip knot on my hook. This is my join yarn. And I'm gonna join first in the bottom corner of my left square. You can start in the right square if you want, but I just find I like to start in the bottom left square the bottom right corner of the left square. I've joined with a slip stitch, now I'm going to chain one. Always chain one in between your slip stitches. This is what creates the little zigs and zags between your squares. Now I do not want to join in the opposing same stitch. So that's the space. What I want is actually the stitch just above it. So the space is what I joined in over here, but I don't want the space on the opposing square, I want the stitch just above it. 
So I'm going to slip my hook into that stitch and slip stitch. Chain one. Don't forget the chain ones. Then I look back over here. I don't want to use the stitch just above the space where I joined. I want to use the stitch above that. So it's every other stitch. So I skip over to the middle stitch of that shell, making sure that I don't catch my yarn on the wrong side. And I slip stitch. Chain one. Look back over at my other square. I want to skip the next stitch and go to the stitch above that. And this is what creates the actual zigzag pattern. Chain one before I hop back over. That's the next stitch. I don't want it. It's actually the space that I want. So I'm going to zigzag. I'm going to slip stitch into that space. Chain one. Hop back to the other square. I don't want the stitch just above where I joined. I want the stitch above that. It's every other stitch. Slip stitch, chain one, hop back to the other side. I don't want the next stitch. I want the stitch just above that. Slip stitch, chain one. I'm going to pull up on that and get in nice and close here so you can really see what I'm doing. You join in the bottom corner space. You don't use the opposing corner space. You use the stitch above it. So you chain one in between. Chain one, do not use the next stitch, use the stitch above it. Slip stitch, chain one. Do not use the next stitch, use the stitch above it. Slip stitch, chain one. And that's what causes that fun little zigzags pattern all the way up. When you get up to the intersection between squares, take a look at where you last joined your yarn. So for me, it was in the actual corner space on this square. I've chained one. I'm not going to use the corner space of this square because I need to skip it just as though this was not a break in squares and instead I'm going to jump over to the corner space on this square. So I'm going to make sure that my yarn is nice and tight and slip stitch chain one. So now I've just worked a slip stitch into the corner of this square. Well that changes things because I do not want to use the opposing corner in this square. What I want to do is use the stitch just above it. So now I've kind of traded the stitches that I use. So instead of it being the corners and the middle stitches of a shell on this side and the first and third stitches of a shell on this side, it's now reversed. This is going to be the space and the middle stitch, space, middle stitch, space, middle stitch. And this is going to be the first, third, first, third, first, third of each stitch all the way up to the top. But everything else is the same. You slip stitch, you chain one, you hop over to the other side, you slip stitch into the skipped stitch, you skip a stitch and you slip stitch into the next one. Chain one, hop back over, skip a stitch and slip stitch into the next one. Chain one, hop back over, I'm skipping a stitch and I'm slip stitching into a space here. You use your stitches and your spaces as though they are all equal. So a stitch and a space are all the same thing. You don't want to skip over top of a space because a space equals a stitch if this is the style of granny square you're using. But you can use this join on several other kinds of granny squares like we did with the extra large mitered. When you get all the way to the end of a seam, you can finish your last slip stitch and if it's at the top corner, you can chain one and also slip stitch into the other corner. You can also start this way too. You can join slip stitch and join over here and then start the zigzag or just start the zigzag. It doesn't really matter. And it's however you feel it looks even when you get to the end of a seam because your squares can jostle around a little bit and it's perfectly all right if you accidentally miss a stitch or skip the wrong stitch, you're still going to get an overall zigzag look and it's not going to interrupt the join strength of this particular join. When you get all the way to the top, snip your tails, fasten off, and then you would continue to do any other top to bottom seams. So if I had more squares over here, you would also do all of these top to bottom seams. But in this case, I only have one. So now I'm going to do the other one. This is the side to side seam. I'm going to join and do exactly the same thing over here. And I'm going to show you what I do when I get to the actual intersection where I've got a join already in play. When you get up to an intersection between squares, 
This is where you get to be really artistic. So you don't just necessarily have to follow the pattern. If you feel that it looks okay to just chain one and then hop into what would be the next stitch. So for example, I would be skipping this corner space and using this corner space normally. But if I decide that I don't really like the way that looks, I can use the stitch of the zigzag itself. I can maybe hop over here and actually use this corner space, even though it doesn't quite work out in the pattern, and then hop over and maybe use this corner space, and then keep the whole thing going. So I'll use this squares space, or stitch rather than the space. And then whenever before I continue, I sort of take a look to make sure I like the way the two zigzag patterns interact with each other. What I'm going for is an even appearance in the zigzag uh, stitch, and also just strength. So if I feel like these two spaces don't want to be left out in the wild, then maybe I'll use them both. Maybe I'll just use one. Whatever I feel makes the most sense. And then you just continue on with the skip the next stitch, slip stitch into the next stitch, chain one, skip the next stitch, slip stitch into the next stitch, chain one, and so on and so on and so on. I have a little bit of a zig here. So I think I'm going to try and zag over top of it. So in that case, I'm going to make sure I've slip stitched, chained one. I'm going to slip stitch into this space over here, and I'm actually going to make sure that I don't catch the seam with my yarn. Chain one, and now I'm going to zigzag over top of it over here chain one, and now I'm going to continue. So I'm going to skip that corner space, and then into the next stitch, and then into the next stitch. And I like the way that looks better. So I've got this happening, and then I have that happening. And it's a nice firm join. And then I just continue with the zigzag stitch all the way to the end, just like I did here. You can finish off the top any way you like. I, my last actual zigzag stitch was into this corner space. I chained one and I joined over here just to sort of keep the whole thing together. But remember when you're adding a border, it will also cover over top of any of your zigzag joins. So anything that you think maybe needs a little bit of fixing, you can also grab and fix while you're adding a border. We hope you enjoyed that little recap on the zigzag stitch. Just a reminder that the full tutorial that we joined all of the extra large mitered granny squares with the zigzag stitch is linked down below. That was a live stream, so you can see the whole thing done in real time. And we will see you soon here on the Jade and Stitches show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have a great week. Bye, everyone. Hi, everybody. Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.